Hello friends, this video on NEAT Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now conserving biodiversity is very very important because we see this huge variety of living organisms existing on this earth which is which is extremely valuable because earth is the only planet with so much of diverse life forms. Right. So what can we do to conserve this biodiversity? Because we also see that a lot of animals as well as plant species, they face extinction, like they become extinct after a certain period of time. So one of the most common example, which must be known to all of you is the dinosaurs, which existed long, long time ago, but now they do not exist anymore. And there are many, many more such species which have become extinct. Now, what can we do from our end to conserve biodiversity? So now there are two approaches to conserve biodiversity, in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. So what do we mean by in situ and ex situ? In means inside. So conservation on site, that means conservation within the natural habitat of the organism that is in situ. Ex situ, ex means outside. So that is off-site conservation. So in situ is within the habitat, ex situ is outside the habitat. So these are the two approaches to conserve biodiversity. Let's talk about in situ conservation. So that is on-site conservation. On-site is nothing but, but the natural habitat of that organism. So protecting an endangered species in its natural habitat. Now again, what do we mean by endangered species? That means species which are facing the danger of, become ext of becoming extinct. That means they still exist, but their numbers or their population have reduced quite a bit, which gives us this indication that the species is endangered so we should take some special care of the endangered species to prevent it them from extinction now when we protect them in their natural habitat that is called in situ conservation so how, what happens when we protect them so we can protect them from the predators that means those organisms which eat these endangered species Right? So either they eat them or they hunt them, they kill them. So anybody who tries to do any kind of harm to these kind of species, so they can be protected within their natural habitat. That means the natural habitat is made uh, more restricted to hunting and uh, people keep observing that nobody is doing any kind of harm to the animals protecting the habitat so the habitat is also protected like not only the spe the animals are protected their habitat is also protected because normally what happens is many a times due to human activities like deforestation sometimes people cut down the entire forests now when the forests are cut what happens the animals do not have their habitat anymore so as a result the animals do not get enough food and they do not survive so in this case it is ensured that nobody can harm either the animals or the habitat of the animal. So these two things are specially taken care of in in situ conservation. So examples of in situ conservation are national parks, sanctuaries, biosphere, reserves. These are all examples of in situ conservation because the animals, they are living in their natural habitat, their own habitat. So we have not disturbed the animals at all, but still we have kind of put a boundary in that area and we have named it as a national park. Like you see so many national parks in India, like the Bandipur National Park in Karnataka, uh, the Banaghatta National Park in Karnataka again, uh, the Gur National Park in Gujarat. You have uh, another national park in Jharkhand called the Hazaribagh National Park, Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand. So you have huge number of national parks and all of these national parks, they are the natural habitat of the animals which live there. It is just that you have put a boundary. You have ensured that whoever comes to visit the nat national park, they can visit it, but they are not allowed to cause any kind of harm to any of the animals or they are not allowed to cause any harm to that entire area of national park. So that way, the animals are protected, their habitat are, is also protected. Now let's look at the second type of conservation which is ex situ conservation or off-site conservation. So here we protect an endangered species outside its natural habitat. So we take the species 
out from their natural habitat however wherever we keep them we ensure that they get proper food they get proper uh, shelter they get proper care so that they can survive so uh, even though it is not its natural habitat but we create an environment it is an artificially created environment where the species feel like their natural habitat so some of the examples of ex situ conservations could be zoo botanical garden or aquarium so if if you have ever been to a zoo what do you see there you see a huge variety of animals but this zoo is an artificially created area but the area has been created in such a way that the place where a tiger or a lion resides that place has been constructed in such a way that the tiger or the lion you know kind of gets its free space to roam around at the same time enough food is provided to all of these animals time to time right so even though it is not the natural their natural habitat but still they get all the facilities so that you know they can kind of live and survive there so this is off site conservation botanical garden is another example you would have seen uh, many botanical gardens in different uh, cities Uh, like in bangalore you have uh, a botanical garden named lal bag where you see huge varieties of plants so many different plant species are um, conserved there they are all kept there taken proper care so that the, the plant species can be conserved so these are examples of off site conservation or ex situ conservation so basically the idea is any place which is not the natural habitat but it is an a man made uh, region which has been made suitable for conservation of plant and animal species that is ex situ conservation thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you